Hi everyone, this video is part four of the 5A series for AP Psychology students. This particular video will focus on identifying the causes and symptoms of depressive, bipolar, dissociative, and trauma and stressor related disorders. So as you can see in the unit outline, we are still in this section called selection of categories of psychological disorders. And we'll be in this section for a little while longer. Today, we'll focus on a few of those categories. So as you can see, the primary focus of this video is to identify the symptoms and possible causes of a few different categories of disorders in the DSM. While you're watching, make sure you take note of these. This is a list of vocabulary concepts you should take note of while watching today's video. By the end, you should be able to define and describe them. The first category that you need to know from this lesson is called depressive disorders. And the DSM-5 categorizes depressive disorders as conditions that involve persistent sadness, emptiness, irritability, followed by cognitive and physical symptoms that impair everyday life. Most of the disorders in this category share some similar characteristics of a disturbance in mood that's typically marked by low energy, sadness, or a loss of interest that interferes with daily life. You'll notice in the blue CED note at the bottom of the screen that AP psychology students only need to know two depressive disorders for the AP exam, and these are major depressive disorder and persistent depressive disorder. And I'll cover those in more detail on the next two slides. Depressive disorders affect about 7% of the U.S. population annually with higher rates seen among women and rising prevalence among adolescents. Depressive disorders arise from a combination of factors, biological, psychological, and social factors. Those who have a family history of depression are at an increased risk. And it's believed that depression may also result from an imbalance in neurotransmitters like serotonin or even changes in hormone levels. Stress and trauma are also believed to be factors. Childhood adversity or chronic stress can also trigger depression. There's also cognitive factors that are linked in with the causes of depression. Negative thinking patterns and low self-esteem can also contribute to depressive disorders. And these disorders are treatable through therapy, medication, and lifestyle changes. So the first disorder in this category is major depressive disorder. It's also called clinical depression, and it's a serious mental health condition that significantly impacts mood, behavior, and well-being. A major depressive episode lasts at least two weeks and involves at least five of the following symptoms, but must include a depressed mood or loss of interest. Um, so those symptoms are depressed mood nearly most of the day or nearly every day, loss of interest in activities that normally would be of interest to the individual, significant appetite changes or changes in weight, sleep disturbances, restlessness or slowed movements, fatigue, low energy, feelings of worthlessness or excessive guilt, difficulty concentrating and making decisions, or recurrent thoughts of death or suicide. And symptoms might cause significant distress or impairment that may not necessarily be due to another medical condition or substance use. Now, if you notice on the bar graph on the screen, this is published by the National Institute of Mental Health using a 2021 national survey of drug use and health data. This study defines major depressive episodes as a period of at least two weeks with a depressed mood or loss of interest, along with sleep problems, um, changes in eating or energy and concentration and low self-worth. So it's consistent with the DSM criteria. And they use this survey to identify the prevalence among adults of major depression. And you can see that the findings show a higher rate in females than male and more frequent episodes in young adults compared to older adults. Major depressive disorder is treatable with therapy, medication, and lifestyle changes, and it can help many people have a more fulfilling and healthy life. The next depressive disorder is called persistent depressive disorder. This was formerly called dysythmia, and it's a chronic form of depression that lasts at least two years in adults. In children and adolescents, it needs to last at least one year. While symptoms are typically less severe than major depressive disorder, they're longer lasting and can significantly affect daily life. Persistent depressive disorder affects about 2% of US adults annually and is twice as common in women as as is in men. To be diagnosed, an individual must experience a de depressed mood for most of the day, more days than not for at least two years, along with two of the following symptoms, poor appetite or overeating, insomnia or excessive sleeping, low energy or fatigue, low self-esteem, difficulty concentrating or making decisions, feelings of hopelessness. 
Now, these are all the additional symptoms and symptoms must cause distress or impairment and cannot be due to another medical condition or substance use. Persistent depressive disorder is linked to biological, psychological, and social factors. Um, higher risks come if family members have depression. There's also believed to be a connection to imbalances in neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. Um, those who experience chronic stress or trauma are also at an increased risk. And as I mentioned previously, negative thinking patterns can also reinforce the symptoms. Just like major depression, persistent depressive disorder is treatable. And there are medications and lifestyle changes and therapy that can help individuals manage symptoms. The next category of disorders is called bipolar disorders, and they are a category of mood disorders, and they're characterized by episodes of changes or shifts in mood that include both highs and lows. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, bipolar disorders affect about 2.8% of U.S. adults annually. They occur equally in men and women, though women tend to experience more rapid cycling which is four or more mood episodes in a year. The onset of bipolar disorders typically occur in late adolescence or early adulthood. Bipolar disorders arise from a combination of factors. Having a close relative with bipolar disorder increases risk. Major life stressors can also trigger episodes, especially in people who are predisposed. And irregular sleep patterns can worsen mood instabilities. So bipolar disorders have two distinct states. There is a high that's referred to as mania, and there's a low that's referred to as depression. There's also a, a milder mania called hypomania. A mania or a manic state is a distinct period of abnormal elevated mood along with increased energy or activity that lasts for at least one week or if it's required to have a hospital stay. The episode must include at least three of the following symptoms or four if the mood is just irritable. They need to have inflated self-esteem. They need to have decreased need for sleep, being more talkative than usual or having rapid speech that's difficult to interrupt, racing thoughts or a flight of ideas, distractibility, increased goal-directed activity or psychomotor agitation, engaging in risky behaviors like excessive spending or reckless driving. And a manic episode might look like someone who stays awake for hours and days on end, working on a brilliant business idea, spending thousands of dollars they don't have rapidly and becoming irritable when others question their plans. Depression is a state in a bipolar disorder in which someone needs to have a low or depressed mood for at least two weeks, where they're losing interest in things that normally would interest them. And this is spanning across multiple activities. And the depressive state needs to have at least five of the following symptoms, significant weight or appetite changes, sleep disturbances, fatigue or loss of energy, feelings of worthlessness or excessive guilt, difficulty concentrating, psychomotor agitation, reoccurrent thoughts of death or suicide. And an example of this depressive episode might look like someone withdrawing from loved ones, struggling to complete daily tasks, or feeling overwhelmed with guilt and having difficulty finding joy in activities they once enjoyed. Bipolar cycling refers to the shifts between the highs and the lows. Individuals may experience varying patterns of cycling, including rapid cycling, or they may have longer periods of stability between each episode. The cycles may be separated by weeks or months or even years, with each episode lasting days to weeks. Bipolar 1 is characterized by at least one manic episode that lasts at least one week or requires hospitalization. Depressive episodes often occur as well, but mania is the hallmark of this disorder. Bipolar 2 involves at least one hypomanic episode and at least one major depressive episode. Hypomania is a milder form of mania. It's characterized by elevated mood, um, possibly irritability, it could be increased energy and activity, but it's less severe than mania and doesn't cause significant disruption in daily functioning. An example of this might be somebody who has high periods of energy and creativity, but much less intense than full mania. They're going to also experience the episode of severe depression as well, um, the sadness and the hopelessness of the low states. So just to summarize, bipolar one includes severe manic episodes 
while bipolar 2 involves milder, less intense manic episodes called hypomania. The next category of disorders is called dissociative disorders. Dissociative disorders involve a disconnect from one's self, specifically from one's thoughts feelings, memories, or sense of identity. This detachment can cause an individual to feel disconnected from their own body, from their personal history, or from their emotions. Dissociative disorders are relatively rare. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, dissociative amnesia is estimated to occur in about 2% of the population. Dissociative identity disorder is much less common, with estimates suggesting about 1.5% of the population who experience it. The cause of dissociative disorders are complex and not fully understood, but they are believed to be caused by significant trauma and stress. Dissociative amnesia is a disruption in memory. It's often following a traumatic event, not caused by physical injury, but psychological trauma. It typically involves the inability to recall personal information, which might include specific events like forgetting the traumatic accident or it could include general information like forgetting one's identity or life history. Dissociative amnesia is sometimes accompanied by a fugue state, though it's not always the case. Fugue means to take flight or to flee, and dissociative amnesia with fugue is in addition to the memory loss, individuals unexpectedly wander away from their usual surroundings. They might engage in activities like traveling and adopting a new identity or acting in ways that are out of character without realizing they have forgotten important aspects of their life. While the fugue state is when the person is away and traveling, they may not actually be aware of their memory loss or their behavior. After the fugue episode ends, the individual typically has no memory of the time spent away or the actions taken place during that period. So dissociative amnesia can occur with or without fugue, and the causes are believed to be from severe stress or tra trauma, and it's often linked, that particular stressor is linked to the onset of dissociative amnesia. Amnesia. It's thought to be a defense mechanism that helps individuals cope with that overwhelming emotional stress by blocking out the painful, distressing memories. Dissociative identity disorder, or DID, is a severe form of dissociation where individuals experience two or more distinct alters. Alters are different personalities or identities that often have different tones of voice, body language, handwriting, and even may exhibit different physiological um, changes like changes in heart rate. An alter is a distinct personality state that may have its own name or behavior, memories, and sense of self. The individual themselves experiences dissociation when the alter is present, typically having no awareness or understanding of what was said or done while an alter is in control of the body. This separation of selves into different alters is believed to develop as a coping mechanism that's born out of severe persistent abuse and childhood trauma. Dissociative identity disorder is often misunderstood and misrepresented in popular culture and media. It's not simply multiple personalities, but rather a splintering or fragmentation of the self. And it develops as this uh, cognitive and emotional coping mechanism in response to unbearable abuse and trauma. People with dissociative identity disorder are typically more at risk of self-harm than harming others. And the final category is called trauma and stressor related disorders. And this category of disorders is defined by having exposure to a traumatic or stressful event that leads to significant psychological distress. Individuals with these disorders experience hypervigilance, which is being highly sensitive and alert and aware and cautious, severe anxiety, having flashbacks, insomnia, which is difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, emotional detachment, or hostility. And while there are several disorders within this category, you need to be familiar with post-traumatic stress disorder. And post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD must include some of the following symptoms. An individual must have experienced or witnessed a traumatic event. This might be something like um, a natural disaster or military combat or witnessing an assault. 
an experience of this event will lead to symptoms for at least one month. And the symptoms might be intrusive symptoms like reoccurring distress, reoccurring memories, nightmares, or flashbacks where the person feels the trauma happening again. Another symptom might be avoidance where they avoid reminders of the trauma like places or people or conversations. Another symptom might be negative changes in mood or thoughts. So having persistent negative beliefs about oneself or the world or feeling emotionally numb or detached. And another is having um, irritability and changes in emotional reactivity. Um, this could include reckless behavior or difficulty concentrating, um, having an exaggerated startle response, or having trouble sleeping. And PTSD is believed to have developed out of exposure to trauma, but not everyone experiences PTSD who experiences trauma. Risk factors include the severity of the trauma, uh, the lack of social support, genetic predispositions, changes in brain functionings, particularly in the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. And PTSD is treatable with therapy like cognitive behavioral therapy, medication, coping strategies, and these different treatment methods can help manage symptoms and improve quality of life. Let's do a few short questions for review. Remember, I'll read the question out loud and you'll need to pause the video to determine the answer. Question number one says, a woman is found wandering in a city far from home with no recollection of her identity or how she got there. Days later, she suddenly remembers who she is but cannot recall anything about the time she was missing. Which diagnosis best explains her experience? Question number two says, a college student who recently survived a car accident finds himself unable to sleep, frequently experiences flashbacks of the crash and avoids riding in cars whenever possible. He is easily startled by loud noises and struggles with feelings of detachment from others. Which disorder does he most likely have? Which of the following is a key difference between bipolar one and bipolar two disorder? This brings us to the end of today's video on identifying the causes and symptoms of depressive, bipolar, dissociative, and trauma and stressor related disorders. Make sure to check our key concepts and key focus questions for today's video to make sure you're taking away the most important parts.